All right, welcome everyone. This time around, I'm going to look at the linear first order or ordinary differential equations. As you may remember, when we were discussing the introduction to differential equations, I made comments about the linear equations and we classified the equations based on their linearity, right? So now over there, there was nth order. Now I'm focusing to the first order. Actually, in the upcoming modules, we'll look at higher orders as well, right? But so far, when I just get rid of the higher orders than this, you will see that I'll get this as the form that I need to have if this equation is linear. And the approach that I'm going to take over here is also this is kind of common in many of the approaches, so I'd like you to be careful about it. I'm going to simply go ahead and divide both sides of the equation by a1 of x. So I want to just leave this alone, right? I just want to have a dy dx over here. So if I do that, what I will get is dy dx, right, plus a0x divided by a1x y will be equal to g of x divided by a1 of x. Nothing real fancy. Then I will actually go at, you can see that I can combine this particular function, right? I'm if, uh, dividing a function only a function of x by another function that's only a function of x. Well, I can kind of combine them and call it a p of sub x. And I can go the same approach over here. And I can even call this an f of x, right? So if I can write this neatly, once again, I will get myself dy dx plus p of x y will be equal to f of x. So this is a, a standard form. So this is the form that I want you to express whenever you first see an equation like this. I don't want you to use this version. I want you to use that version. It's the same thing. Also, I'm going to introduce a definition for you. And this definition is going to come in handy in many different types of equations we are solving. And if my f of x, or same thing you can see over here, let me go up a bit, g of x is equal to 0, right? I'm looking at the right hand side of the equation. If g of x is 0, obviously f of x is 0 too. I have a special name for these type of equations, and I call these homogeneous. Homogeneous. The basically the differential equation is homogeneous. Typically, the approach that I, t I, I take when I solve a linear uh, differential equation is I'm going to first look at the, let's actually go ahead and write this. Uh, I'm going to first look at the solving the homogeneous differential equation. First, solve homogeneous differential equation. Okay, I'm going to call this complementary solution. And then the next is I'm going to go ahead and then, let's write it here, then solve the non-homogeneous. De. Okay, and as I said, I'm going to call this y complementary. I'm going to call this y p, y particular. And the final solution that I want from this, so the, let's call this the solution that I want, y will be equal to y c plus y p. So let's look at them uh, one by one. Let's first start with the, um, and I will explain why I'm doing this approach in a minute. Uh, let's look at this uh, homogeneous version where this right hand side is zero. Okay, so if I rewrite this equation, here is what it's going to look like. dy dx, right, plus p of x, y. So far, there is no difference between the homogeneous and non-homogeneous, right? It will be equal to zero. Now this is the difference, right? The right-hand side is zero. Now I would like you to pause the video because you should be able to solve this, okay? I'm going to explain this in, in you know soon, but I want you to think about this for a second, all right? Okay, now you're back and you solve it, let me solve it too, right? So now this is a separable equation. This is from the previous segment. Because look into this, this is a p of x, I have a d of x, I have y, I have y, right? So let's combine them and see what happens. dy by y will be equal to minus, let's not forget the minus sign, times dx. Again, I simply move both this term to the right hand side, move this y down here, and I move this um, basically dx down this side as well, right? And I will obviously take the integral of both sides and I'm going to get ln of y for the left hand side. The right hand side will be minus the integral of p of x dx. And let me add c1 because the final uh, constant I want to call it c. Obviously, I do this approach all the time. So I'm going to take the e to the power of both sides. I'll get myself e to the minus p of x dx plus a integration constant of c1 
and we have done this before so e to the so I can simply go out and uh, do this this becomes e to the c1 right so and I'm gonna call this a c so then when I will set and done you will see that the equation that I have will be c times e to the minus p of x dx let's not forget the integral sign obviously all right so this will be my complementary solution for all first order linear equations okay now the question is how am I going to get this yp so far uh, this was uh, I was able to obtain okay so in order to obtain the yp so let's write here yp that's the goal this is the non-homogeneous one I need to use the integration factor right use and integration factor and I'm going to call this if initials right and this particular integration factor and you will see that once I start solving at higher order differential equations as well we will be using integration factor all day long right so it's something that you may want to get used to and I'm going to call this uh, yif will be equal to e to the power of p of x dx immediately I want to highlight the difference look into this there's no negative sign there's a negative sign in here okay I see sometimes issues in the examination right Com confusing these two right uh, so use an integration factor and then this particular integrating factor and you're going to multiply the linear differential equation okay both sides of the equation obviously and then I will be able to integrate this okay the, 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 the logic how this works is because when you mul multiply your um, basically this equation where is it this equation by if what you will get that you will get an ODE which is separable all right I will not be going over the proof okay this is actually in your book you can read it if you wish to but I will illustrate how to do it with an example that I'm gonna give momentarily and I'm gonna write the final equation that you're gonna get for yp so so your y will be equal to yc plus yp right and yc we already obtained a c times e to the, I'm just copy pasting from above that is a minus let's not forget that um, p to the x dx and now this yp is you will see the integrating factor will be like this minus p of x dx you can see it's the same thing right so far I want to highlight this this and this is the same term right now it's gonna get a little bit more fancier so there will be an integral in here and I will have an integration factor which is p of x dx so this time around I don't have myself a negative sign in front of it times f of x dx okay um, so this approach that I use yc plus yp is used very commonly right however one thing to highlight uh, over here is actually you don't really need to find yc itself because if you find yp see what happens I have this multiplied by this integral when I get this integral take the integral of this terms right I will get a plus c1 an integration constant and you can see that the integration constant multiplied by this it's kind of like this right it's just another c value so as this is an arbitrary value and that integration constant is an arbitrary value I can combine them okay but please note that this is not always the case this is only the case for linear equations I will be going ahead with solving these type of equations getting the homogeneous uh, equation and getting a complementary solution plus the particular solution just want to highlight that that sometimes as you will see from the next uh, few segments um, I must find by C because they will not be in the same format okay okay do not memorize this my recommendation do not memorize this because as you know my uh, exams are closed book closed notes no formula sheet no calculator so there's ton of things to memorize this is not one of them I'll tell you when to memorize all right just know how to use this so get yourself an integration factor memorize this and multiply the DE by that term and you will get this okay it's not that uh, complicated you will see in a few minutes why don't I get us going with a fairly um, manageable uh, question and then we'll get to a little bit more involved questions okay let me write the example that I want to solve dy dx plus xy is equal to zero this is a nine question do, do I really have to cover the segment to solve this equation is no I don't have to cover anything because this is a separable equation take a look at it 
this dy by y, right? Is this homogeneous? Note that this is a homogeneous equation. So this is a separable equation. And I covered the separable equations in the previous segment, so you should be able to solve this. But let's practice. This is on the easier end of the spectrum, but that's fine, okay? So now I want to solve this question from this uh, approach of using the integrating, integrating factors, okay? This will set the tone for the rest of the questions that I will solve, which will be a little bit more demanding than this, okay? So the first thing always, as I mentioned when I started this conversation, is I want you to move this to basically over here and divide this zero, but it's going to be zero, but I just leave this alone. Y will dy dx plus x divided by x squared minus 9, y will be equal to zero. So now this is the standard form. And as I mentioned, you can solve this, but let's pretend that I'm solving this equation and let's pretend that actually this is, there is a value in here, okay? This is a non-homogeneous equation. So let's, let's show how it works, okay? The first goal is to find the IF, integration factor. And for that, remember that I will, I will have to have this, e to the power of p of x dx, right? And the p of x in this particular case is this, right? So let's write it in, e to the power of integral x by x squared minus 9 dx. Nice. Okay, let's take a look at this whether I can do something about it. Actually, this is kind of simple because take a look at this one. Um, this is going to be the natural logarithm. And when I take the integral of, you know, x, actually 2x, right? If you think about that, it's like 2x by 1, one third, right? Good. So let's do it. Let's go here. e to the, that's going to be 1 half. Let's not forget that. And it's going to be ln of x squared minus 9, right? Again, I, I, I mentioned this many times already, but uh, take the derivative of this and make sure that this matches. You will see it matches, right? It's going to be 2x divided by x squared minus 9, and you can see over here, right? Okay, so far so good. And note that one thing to illustrate here that I'm not adding a plus c. Why am I doing not, not doing that? If you do it, it is not going to be a mistake. But the thing what will happen is there will be going to be different uh, plus c's along the way, you will see soon. And then I can combine them into a 1c, so you don't really need to. But technically, you should add a plus c, but you don't really need to, okay? So a question. Let me just move, uh, turn around like this, ln of x squared minus 9, 1 half, right? And if I get this, then I'm going to get myself, you can see e to the power of ln will cancel each other, so I'll get the square root of x squared minus 9, right? Note that in here, uh, my x... Uh, you know, interval of solution. Uh, note that I am need to get my x is larger than 3 or x is less than minus 3. It's true like that, right? Otherwise, it's, I'm going to get a negative value. This may come in handy. It's always good to check these things along the way, all right? Now, as the procedure has implied, I'm going to go ahead and multiply both sides of the equation with this integration factor. So it's x squared minus 9 times dy dx plus x by by x squared by 9 times square root of x squared minus 9 will be equal to 0. Okay, so this, what I'm going to tell you next, will always be correct. Okay, do you remember there's a product rule of differentiation? So if I have a f function f times uh, g and I'm taking the derivative of that, that will actually be f prime g plus f g prime do you remember that so you can see here that this and this will cancel so i'm going to get myself this right so then if you look at into this basically let's go back and rewrite this d dx of square root of x square minus 9 times y will be equal to the right hand side which is zero okay I want to highlight that um, this is always the case. So I always get d dx of integrating factor times y. That's the whole point why this works. So this is important. This is always the case. So you don't have to really think too much. I'm just showing you how it's done. So then if I take the integral of both sides, you will end up with square root of x squared minus 9 times y will be equal to a constant c. Do you see what I mean? Now you get a c. You had another c when you take the integral for the integration factor. You can combine them. So no need for this. So when I am done, I will get myself c divided by square root of x squared minus 9. Okay? 
and you can see now that I have a singular solution x is equal to minus 3 and x is equal to 3 so those are singular solutions and I established over here what should be my range so when I look at the interval for this particular solution this needs to be minus infinity to 3 right and in addition to that I also will have minus 3 let's not forget that 3 to minus infinity okay so these are the two uh, intervals that this solution will be applicable Okay, I'll be back with more examples to illustrate how this approach is applied. Thanks.